So if you're serious about making gains in the gym, this video will save you from a lot of issues and plateaus down the line. Specifically, I wanna talk to you about two muscle building mistakes that I see in the gym every single week, which limit the progress of the vast majority of the lifters there. And I've been coaching this now for about nine years, been lifting myself for almost 12 years, and I wish someone had showed me a video like this when I was first starting out because it would have helped me a lot. Now diving into it, the first mistake that I see destroy a lot of progress is training through pain. If you talk to any person in the gym that's been lifting for a while, it's probably not gonna take you too long until you hear something like this. Yeah, you know, my shoulder's been hurting recently, I have a bad back, my elbow has been bothering me, and then you see the exact same person just moments later, they're barbell bench pressing heavy with zero warm up. the person that was complaining about low back pain is also deadlifting and rowing with horrible form, and the elbow pain crew is doing 10 heavy sets of arms using cheat reps. And look, I understand that connective tissue issues can occur even if you have perfect form. And I also know that there are many situations where people indeed need to train harder and challenge themselves. But pushing through pain is not one of those situations. There's a really big difference between general discomfort that occurs throughout a hard set versus having actual pain. If you continue to use the same routine and there are no clear improvements, now you're putting yourself at a risk where the problem can get much worse. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happens with most guys. They ignore it, they delay seeing a physio or a trainer or making any changes to their routine, and then the problem escalates. Then soon they have to take a very long break from training that muscle group and maybe even sometimes four to six months to recover. Being smart does pay off. And sometimes it's as simple as using a different exercise variation that doesn't bother you as much much, maybe going slightly higher in reps, lower in weight, that might be enough to let things calm down and then you can slowly get back to normal. And the beauty of training for muscle growth in general is that no exercise is a must. We have dozens of different options for each muscle group and we can get creative and work around these limitations. And there's also a much greater lesson here as well. In fitness and life, one concept that can save you from a lot of trouble is understanding asymmetric decisions. And the way I see it, the potential upside when it comes to gaining muscle, if you're pushing through pain during your workouts, is pretty low. Compare that to the potential downside of getting an injury which could take you out for months and may even have irreversible consequences, which is massive, it's a huge downside. So in life and fitness, you wanna be able to recognize and avoid such decisions that have a major downside for a very little upside. And when it comes to building muscle, it's all about playing the long game. It's about progression over the course of months and years. So if you have to take it easier for a workout or a couple of weeks, it's not a big deal in the grand scheme of things as long as you're hitting the like button on all my videos. Now, the stronger you get and the more advanced you are, fatigue management becomes even more important. There are only so many very hard 20 weeks in a row that you can do. That's why I personally take a deload about every five to six weeks. I reduce the number of sets that I do and I also lower the weight by about 10 to 15%. This gives my body a much needed break and I'm able to get rid of that accumulated fatigue and come back stronger. Now, if you feel like you never need a deload, well, that might be because you're not training hard enough. Now, speaking of training hard, this brings me to the second muscle building mistake we need to talk about, which is never testing your limits. So we know that in order to build muscle, we need to perform enough hard sets taking closer to failure. And the current scientific consensus is to do about 10 to 20 sets per week per muscle group, and then each one of those sets taken to about one or two reps shy of failure. And I would say for most people, that range of 10 to 15 sets per week per muscle group is more than enough as a starting point if those sets are done right. Now, based on my experience, having trained in dozens of different gyms and seeing thousands of people lift across 50 different countries, it is very rare to see people take that many sets closer to failure. You will see a bicep curl taking closer to failure, maybe a chest press from time to time, Time, but it's definitely not happening consistently. And more often than not, the opposite is true. The vast majority of sets look more like warm up sets. The person will end the set nowhere close to failure and they will challenge themselves a little bit, but they're very far from their limits. And you can make some progress like that, especially as a beginner, but eventually your body will stop adapting and your numbers will get stuck. So this brings up the question, how do you know 
if you're training hard enough. Well, next time in the gym, you can test your limits. And for that, I suggest picking exercise such as the leg press where stabilization is not a limit factor and you don't have to worry about your lower back giving out. You can set the safeties on the machine so you can get out even if you fail a rep. Then I would suggest starting with three to four warm up sets to get ready and then pick a weight that you normally do for a set of 10 and now do a set for as many reps as possible. There's no rep target. Your goal is just to keep good form and go all out. If you have someone in the gym you can ask to help encourage you, that does make a big difference, but that person shouldn't be moving the weight in any way. They should just be there for mental support and to help you in case you get stuck. And if you've never done an all out set in the leg press before, prepare to get very uncomfortable. And don't let that discomfort fool you or limit you. Remember, your goal is to keep moving the weight until you can't. So you really wanna make sure you put in 100% of your effort and focus into this one set. From my experience, most people who do this set will get at least five more reps compared to their previous workout. And in some cases, they get 10 to 15 more reps. And that means that the previous workout where they thought they were training one or two reps shy of failure, they were closer to four to five reps shy of failure, maybe even more. And it's very easy to fall into this routine where you feel like you're training hard, but you're objectively never testing it, so you could be leaving gains on the table. I personally like to test my limits every two to three months. I'm gonna take the last set of an exercise and just go to failure. And often I'm surprised with how many extra reps I got. And by the way, if you really want a fun experience, try doing this with walking lunges or Bulgarian split squats. And let's not forget, our bodies and minds are great at keeping us in our comfort zone, not just in fitness, but in all areas of life. So next time you're in the gym, I challenge you to test your limits and let me know in the comments below how it went. For extra gains, make sure you subscribe to the channel. For coaching, if you want to work with me in your fitness journey, details in the description below. If you want to know more about building muscle, check out this video at the end, and I'm going to see you right there.